that step back is cold. Everybody knows it. The distance that you cover, <laughs> I'm like, oh. I would just like mess around and practice and like hit a couple and ha oh, it's funny, like whatever. But it was just always something in the back of my pocket that I could use. Cause like, yes, I'll pull it. But like, even I think my progression to this year is like, I'll do a step back and people bite so hard that I have mm -hmm. like options out of it now. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Once you get some in your bag, people are biting. Welcome back to Sometimes I Hoop. Today, we've got a hooper from down under on the pod. Quick humble brag, MVP of last year's ACC tournament, led Virginia Tech to their first ever Final Four appearance, second in assists in the NCAA, over 1,600 career points. None other than one of my favorite players in the game right now, Georgia A. Moore. Thanks for hopping on the pod. Thanks for having me. Oh yeah, I'm so excited to have you here. You guys just came off a huge win at NC State, who was ranked third overall, 12 points, 10 assists, double-double. You're currently averaging 18 and 8, which is wild. But talk to me about that big win against NC State. Yeah, every time we play State, it's just a really good game. Um, yeah. Because of like the way that ACC tournament works and all of that, like we end up playing them two or three times a year and oh, wow. very familiar with them and their coach and I don't know just the way they play so we knew that we needed it too because they were number three in the nation and you know the first game we had we beat them on the buzzer um and mm -hmm. honestly we probably didn't play well like that first game which is like crazy to say because like we we upset the yeah. whatever but we knew like this time to like just come in and and have the utmost confidence and I think we all did we all played a really really good like all-round game yeah, I mean, it looked like you guys were hitting on all cylinders that game. The chemistry <laughs> was there, always between you as Liz, but I think everybody was really locking in, which was really exciting to watch. But right now, you guys are first in the conference, but it's a really close race. You got Louisville at two, Syracuse at three, six games left in conference play. So, And you guys have a crazy stretch coming up for your last six games, talking about mm -hmm. Duke, Louisville, UNC, Notre Dame. So, you know, what is your mindset like trying to close out this home stretch, not only for ACC tournament rankings, but also heading into March Madness, trying to get a top seed. Yeah, I think for me, the best thing about it is like we went eerily similar, like through the same situation last year. Like we had a very mm -hmm. tough end of year stretch. And then we like last six out of seven games or something were against like great teams. But yeah, I think like learning from last year, carrying it to now, like it truly is one game at a time. Cause like, mm -hmm. if we look at our schedule, we can get so overwhelmed. Like not only do we have these great teams, but we have like Louisville and Notre Dame on yeah. the road. Like that's really, yeah. they're both really hard places to play at. It makes a difference. A huge difference. Um, but in saying that, like there's such great opportunities for us to set ourselves up for March. Um, and you know, you wouldn't ask for anything else to have those great games to finish up. Like if it was easy, it'd be boring. Like I, yeah. I love a good challenge and you know, all those teams face like give us really big challenges, especially, you know, you play against Duke and UNC again. Like we had yeah. lost to Duke earlier in the year and UNC is always down to the last possession of the game. So mm -hmm. definitely going to yeah. send out the seniors with a bang. <laughs> for sure. For sure. It's, it's really exciting. And I mean, Talk to me about kind of like sleeper teams or sleeper players that you are really Ooh. impressed by this season. Because I feel like a lot of people have really come on the radar and upset somebody or had yeah. huge games that you just didn't expect. It's hard because like teams in the ACC have been like ranked and unranked and I feel like everyone's yeah, yeah, jumping yeah. around. So I feel like at some point people have gotten their flowers. Mm -hmm. But I like it's always dangerous to play Syracuse. Yeah. Um, I mean, Kamora Johnson's just for a freshman. Is Hooping. Hoping. She's really good. Yes. She's really good. <laughs> really good. Um, and she has this like confidence to her that's just, yeah, she's just very steady for a freshman. Mm -hmm. um, and I applaud that for sure. But I mean, even Florida State, like they were so hot when, especially when we played them. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But it, it's just like, I don't know. It depends. Like people are get on runs and, but I would probably maybe say Syracuse. Yeah. I mean, Miss Fair is a bucket. Like how do you just scout that? 3,000 points and she's not getting talked to, like as much as she probably should. Our next thing we're about to get into is talking about giving players their flowers who may not always be in that spotlight. So mm -hmm. we can start with Miss Fair because like I played her as a freshman when she was on Buffalo mm -hmm. and we were, were in the same class. And so I remember we're like going through the scout and you know, you watch their highlight tape basically to get ready for it. And I'm over here watching her like, what are we doing? How are you supposed to? And then you play against her and it's that much faster. And it's not yeah. like 
she, there's only one piece to her game. She's a three level scorer. And so you play her more than I do. So talk to me about having to deal with her and just how good she is. You get so sucked in on watching her trying to produce a shot that she'll hit you with a pass that just is missing mm-hmm. as well. Like that's just like the the levels to her and her game is it, it's, she's not just a scorer. Like she can score a ton of points, but that's yeah. not just her game. You know, we have someone in our team, Kayla King, who who's very long, a great defender and you know, we put her in tough situations because she has to guard everyone's best players. But mm-hmm. we also have to be, you know, in gaps and in positions to help Kayla because that's like a, a tall task to ask. And it's like, tiring. It's, My yeah. gosh. Yeah, you're you defender. Like I, I be in the gaps. I'll say I love gap. the I'm not gaps. Do no on ball prep. Yep. Yeah. I'm yeah. I, I'm a great gap girl. I'm gonna give you a little. Oh, I'll give you a little Stab. stun at you. A little sound something. But I'm boss. Somebody else mm-hmm. go do your work. Switch. I respect you. <laughs> Switch off ball. Oh, you stay uh-huh. with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. But other players in ACC. We just talked about Florida State. Tanaya yes. Latson, a bucket. Like there's no doubt about. It. Talk to me about. Tanaya Latin. Yeah, I mean, she plays at her pace and she she puts the pressure on you for sure mm-hmm. from the full 90 feet. You know, last year, I think, you know, she was getting attention and then she just continued on and, and she's great. Um, and you know, it just the style of play just suits her there at Florida State. Like when we played them, it was really hard to stop because they have three guards who are very, very aggressive. Yeah, yeah. You know, her, Bajetti and, and Gordon are just all very good at attacking. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, she's... She's incredible. Uh, the, the like the freshmen and sophomores, like the people that are coming into like college basketball now, are just like yeah. s- like advancing at a rate that I just I get shocked at. Like I I watch basketball now from a fan standpoint. Mm-hmm. I just sit back and just in like, awe. Wow, wow. Yeah. No, I I completely agree. And I think another person that I really love watching, who I feel like maybe kind of similar to fair doesn't get like that national spotlight is Kiki Jefferson on Louisville. Mm -hmm. I think Mm -hmm. that she was a great pickup for them in the transfer Mm -hmm. portal. And I think she was at JMU before. She was at JMU. Yeah. And I remember seeing on Twitter just like randomly, like Kiki Jefferson, 40 points. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, I think now tournament time, I think their conference tournament, I think she shot something like borderline, like 90 or hundred percent in one of the games. Yeah. Cause what? I remember seeing something about that, but (laughs) yeah. Yeah. So talk to me about how she's really added to Louisville this year. I mean, we play them this week, so I don't want to talk too much. Uh, don't don't give away the scout. Don't, don't give away the scout. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's but okay. It's just just the craftiness and, and the three the three level scoring is just is so dangerous to guard. Mm-hmm. So dangerous to guard. That's all we'll get. It's okay. You you don't have to go deep. You don't have to go deep. <laughs> um, I got you. We'll protect the secrets. <laughs> Now we're going to move into your early basketball days. Growing up, is it is it Ballarat, Australia? Ba- Ballarat. Ballarat, Australia. Uh-huh. Love it. You first started playing basketball when you were five. Mm-hmm. And I heard that they needed a sub and you only had flip-flops. Is this a true story? Tell me about this it. Is, this is a very true story. Um, and the first time I told this story in the States, so we call flip-flops thongs. Oh. So I'm, I'm, I'm telling this story and I'm like, yeah, I wore thongs my first game. And they were oh, like, they didn't take that the right way. Uh-huh. Flip flops. I was in flip flops. It was my cousin's game. Um, they all fouled out. Not all of them, but enough to okay. have to drag someone from the stands. And, you know, yeah. my cousin still plays in college. And, like, really, she's been, like, my idol my whole life. Oh, wow. And, you know, she was kind of the one that went to college. And I'm like, okay, yeah, like, I definitely want to do that as well. But mm-hmm. my first game, I was five. Yep, wearing flip flops. Wow. That's an amazing story. You went out there in some thongs and got busy. I love that for you. I <laughs> love breaking ankles, <laughs> breaking ankles in your thongs. Okay, <laughs> talk to me a little bit about the basketball culture in Australia and how it may be different to what it is here. <laughs> I mean, this is like the most respectful way, in uh-uh. like high school and stuff. Like we don't have highlight tapes. Like we uh-huh. don't get put on like pedestals. We don't get like this is the next big thing. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I think in Australia it's very like blue collar, like. There's no fluff about it. We're not going to gas you. Um, it's you got it, you got it, or or not. That's it. I think also, like, we, we grow up, we play semi-pro. Mm-hmm. We don't really do high school basketball. Like, you get thrown in with women. Yeah. If you're, like, fluffing around, they're not going to put up with it. 
talk to me about the recruiting process. Because for a year, it's like, you know, we play travel ball, you play in front of the coaches, all this different stuff. But talking to Agnes a little bit, my only, you know, really insight into how you get recruited as Australian is a lot of it is playing either um, with the Australian national team or sending your film. So talk to me about your recruiting process, how you got in front of coaches, how it is with the time difference, getting on the phone, <laughs> did you take visits? What was all of that like? Yeah. So for me, like my recruiting was very low key. Like I didn't really have many schools reach out, um, mm -hmm. which is fine. You don't need you just need that one. Out. You just need that one. It's worked out for me very, very yes. well. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. But definitely national team helped. I got some interest, you know, some colleges like texting you. And as you said, you have to kind of send out film. And mm -hmm. But like I had to make my own like film tapes and sometimes you just like never got a reply. Like I'll say oh. this right now because like Coach Brooks and I have like a lovely relationship and I've told him this story. Like my dream school was Syracuse. Oh, wow. And I like emailed them and I never heard back. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Like whatever. Like, but. Oh. <laughs> That's, that's fine crying yeah it's okay. so it's like I, I was just like shooting my shot at so many schools and just not getting a text back yeah and then I was like fortunate enough to get picked for this like NBA uh global academy or something like oh that. yeah like basketball without borders all that stuff yeah uh -huh. you were you there no whoa I was I In Tampa. was there I was there yes yeah. so I went to that and that's kind of where uh -huh. like Virginia Tech saw me and like that's like for sh like that's for sure when I was like okay like I I have schools like that actually want me now like, yeah so that was like kind of like the deciding factor of like yes I, I have to be like I have a place I can go like I will go to college yeah um but that's crazy I just remember that because we did like three on three stuff there too didn't we I, we were on the same team I do recall we had a yes freshman year you helped Virginia Tech to their first NCAA tournament appearance since 2006 that's a hefty time to be out of the tournament and I think a lot of that comes from that core that you guys built and then on top of that you add in Asia Shepard which was huge she was a big part of that team and so how was that getting tournament experience so young for that core moving into now what you guys are now and being a starting point guard as a freshman is uh -oh. a lot so what was that freshman year tournament experience like Oh my gosh. Okay. So first of all, it's the bubble. It's in yeah. San Antonio. That was cool. That was a cool experience. It was cool. For me, my like defining and a game that I will like always, always look back on is when we played Baylor. Mm -hmm. When, when, mm -hmm. when they were Baylor. Yeah. Like, when Alyssa, <laughs> Queen, Dijanae, they were good. And Coach Mulkey was there. So we, we play them. Um, and we, we get beat pretty bad. Um, but I think I, I remember after the game, like Didi Richards fist bumps me and she's like, good job, baby girl. I'm like shaking fist bumping. You're like, like to see like those girls. I was like, you, I, I watch you all the time. Like, oh my <laughs> gosh, like, like to play against like those girls, it, it's like, that's who you want to be. And mm -hmm. that's the position that you want to be in. Like, I think they were a one seed and they were mm -hmm. just like coming in and grilling people like cooking. And yeah. it's kind of funny because you look back, well, you look forward and junior year, that was us. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We're out here like cooking, like we're having like the time of our lives. And I think yeah. it's just like, I don't know, like full circle stuff. Like it gives me yeah. goosebumps like thinking about it. Like, like baby, baby Georgia freshman year would have never, ever imagined any of this happening. Like to be in a mm -hmm. final four is like ridiculous. I think especially yeah. too in women's basketball, it's so difficult because you have those powerhouses. Yes. And yes. I think, you know, like as the years continue, they'll obviously stuff will get mixed up because the game is just advancing so, so much. But, mm -hmm. you know, like San Antonio and, and being a starting point guard as a freshman, you know, I was just a, I was just a baby and <laughs> I had to control a whole lot of stuff that I, I, yeah, you know, Coach Brooks put a lot of pressure on me, but I'm glad he did because now like I have full confidence in what I can do and I've seen all these situations before and mm -hmm. maybe if I was like on the bench or like not good at taking his feedback, like I don't know where I would be truly, um, but it's, it's been a pretty cool ride and I don't know, just like, as I said, like the full circle stuff is so yeah. cool to think about. It's crazy to think that just in that two year span, you guys are able to go from a team that's not really on the radar, playing mm -hmm. a powerhouse like Baylor, and all mm -hmm. of a sudden you're the powerhouse. And that's mm -hmm. because of what you guys created with Coach Brooks and that core that you have. 
But talking about your junior year, it was huge. And that leap that you made was incredible, honestly. And so we know we got the three-point shot, all these different things. We got a bit of swag to you as well, as we all know the way you're out there. In that offseason heading into your junior year, what were your focuses? Was it like, I'm coming in this year, I'm going to be more aggressive? What were you focusing on in the gym with Coach Brooks? He has always had way more confidence in me than I have myself. (laughs) So I think he's always just told me, you know, like, you're that player, like, you're my point guard, like, go out and and prove it. You're the best player on the floor, like, go out and prove it. And the thing that held me back really was my mental. Like, I've always been like, no, I'm too humble. Like, I don't want to be like that. Like, oh, I'm not Mm -hmm. that. I'm not all that. But I think it flipped last year like during conference play when I was like, no, for us to be great, I have to be great. And I have Mm -hmm. to think that I'm great and I have to go out and just like have no regrets. Mm -hmm. So like for me, it was a mental shift. I don't think it was really anything physically at all. Um, It's a hundred percent mind over matter. And I know that now. Yeah. And it's not like I would like go in and be like, oh, I'm, I'm Georgia Amor. I deserve this. I deserve that. And I was like, I'm Georgia Amor. I'm going to, I'm going to prove to, I don't know who it is. (laughs) <laughs> but I would prove to somebody <laughs> yeah. that we deserve to be where we are. So it was like nothing really physical. It was like literally all mental. When do you think maybe you yourself or you as a team were like, oh, we can go to Final Four. Like we're a title <laughs> contending team. We can get there. We have the pieces. I think we fully believed it. Like all okay. year, like we were like, okay, we're special. But it was like a flow state that we had. Like no one was like, oh, let's like win a natty, blah, blah, blah. It was like, no, like one game at a time. Like we're going to come in. We're going to bust ass and we're going to prove it. And I yeah. think when we got that one seed and whatever, people were like, oh, first one seed to bounce, like don't deserve it. Stuff like that. Like uh-huh. we, like we, we peeped it and that fuels like, the fire. And it did. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh-huh. it did because they were saying, yeah, yeah, no, it, it did. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> and we did a really good job at not letting any of that stuff like distract us more. So push us forward. Um, mm-hmm. And I think, we were just like so locked in on what we needed to do that, like I said, like it was a flow state. Like there was no and if or buts. Like every time we went out, I had so much confidence in everyone. And like you, like when everyone's confident, it's just, you can yeah. do some pretty insane things. It's hard to stop. And we've talked a lot about the Final Four, but once you get there, Final Four is different. It's, there's all the antics getting there and there's all the different media days and it's huge. So tell me about, the atmosphere at the Final Four, and then beyond that, playing LSU, and that's a tough game. So tell yeah. me about the Final Four experience that you guys had. Yeah, so we we play Ohio State late, mm-hmm. um, and we're in Seattle, and it's we've we've we're gonna change time differences, yeah, time yeah, zone, yeah. Like three times, and we get on that flight early out to Dallas, and we land, <clears throat> and there's a DJ, and we're yeah. doing media already, and it's just like it's a shock. Like it's shocked. Like I'm here to play. I wasn't expecting all of this. Mm -hmm. And then we go to like some Nike bus and we get like decked out with gear. Mm -hmm. And and it's just like so much, but it's like the coolest thing ever. Like it's like the pinnacle of basketball. Like literally ask for anything like being in it. Like I was like so flustered and overwhelmed that I wasn't like really soaking it in. But like Mm -hmm. after like we had lost and I reflected, I was like, wait, no, that's like the coolest thing I've ever done in my life. But yeah, it's not like we forgot that we're at the final four, but it's like, I, I kind of wish that like at some point during the game, we were like, you no, know, like a championship games on the line. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like, we were so focused on that game, but it's like, it's just like the biggest moment of your life that you kind of forget. It's like, I, I completely know what you mean. You're so focused on the game, but it's yeah. also like, oh, the national championship is next and I'm doing all these different things. And yeah. oh my God, am I here right now? It's so uh-huh. hard to stay focused at the final four. Like, that's when I wish that we were kind of like, no, like, and Natty is on the line. Yeah. Because I think, like, we just lost our way a bit. And, like, mind you, this is not, like, no diss against LSU. They were great. They mm-hmm. came out. They mm-hmm. attacked our zone. They figured us out really, really quickly. And they they played with, like, probably a little bit more confidence and aggression when they started mm-hmm. chipping away at our lead and, and continuing on. Um, But, yeah, th- it was a tough game because, yeah. like, I think just being a competitor in general, like, you always want to win, um, mm-hmm. but it was just like up, like upsetting. Obviously, like that big of a thing on the line, and you know, like you you had it when you feel like you had it, and then you just mm-hmm. lost it. Like that was like the worst feeling as Pain. well. But but as a women's basketball fan, we went home. I watched the LSU Iowa game, and I was like, wow, like it's insane. Yeah. 
That was a great Final Four to watch yeah. all of the games. And I think it was really exciting. You know, you build this bond with Liz and you guys are kind of that foundation that you talked about at Virginia mm -hmm. Tech, the two of you and Kayla. So yep. how do you feel that relationship off the court really translated to that on-court bond? Because you guys being point guard center, on ball screens, the offense runs through the two of you. And I think that chemistry, you can see it watching that you just know. And Kayla mm -hmm. too, she comes off the screen, you you're, you yeah. know where she is. And so talk to me about you and Liz's bond, but also the three of you being the foundation of Virginia Tech and what it has become. How does that chemistry kind of really come from your relationship off the court that you've connected? We've just like been through so many times together that it's like, yeah. it's it's made us so close. And like, it's to the point where like, they are my sisters, like they will get on my nerves. <laughs> like no one else, like no but one I, else. Yeah, but like I would defend them. I will love them to the day I die. Like we've just like had so many like cool experiences together, but like foundation wise, like, not to brag, I think we're very smart. <laughs> mm -hmm, so like mm -hmm. we we really like did everything that Coach Brooks wanted. Um, we like put out all of our trust and faith in him. And obviously his like plan has worked out very well. But, you know, like in practices and individuals, like we're, we're doing stuff together. Like I, I know exactly where Kayla's going to be. I know exactly where Liz is going to be. And the, the chemistry off court. <clears throat> we also live together, the three of mm -hmm. us, <clears throat> for a couple of years. Um, but like we just knew how receptive each other were. Mm -hmm. And like, I think that helps like in the heat of the moment, like it, things can get out of hand or like you can like yell or something like that, but like neither of us take it personally. So like when you want to talk about like pick and roll situations, like, yeah, it looks pretty, but like sometimes we'll have a play and I might bounce it to Liz and, and she hits the shot and it looks like, oh great, like we hit a shot. She'll come back, she'll like jog down and be like, hey, like next time I need that ball closer to me. Yeah, or like yeah, yeah. next time, like, <clears throat> like it's just I don't get butt hurt about it because I know for for us to win I have to do as much as I can to make her life easier she gets double and triple teamed and literally clocked in the head so many times a game that I'm like okay like whatever I have to do I will do it yeah Kayla's instance like she's such a great shooter that she demands so much attention that it's like it is my job to get the ball exactly where she needs it like mm -hmm. any anywhere else, like I've thrown her off and like that's completely my bad. So it's like we just have an understanding that wait, we can't be successful individually without each other for sure. Yeah. Liz needs to set me good screens. Kayla needs mm -hmm. to hit down shots to open up my lanes. Like mm -hmm. we just have a full understanding that we're so important to each other's success and none of us are selfish that we would, you know, like, I don't know, like get mad at each other like that. Like yeah. we, we just like have an understanding that we just need each other more than we can be individuals. Yeah. And I think that having that understanding of like being able to separate on the court and off the court, we're on the court, I'm going to get on you. I'm going to do this and that, but it never translates off the court. We get in the locker room, we're pals, we're best buds again, it's whatever. But like, because of that friendship off the court, I'm able to get on you. You're able to mm -hmm. trust that it's all coming out of a place where I want the best for you. And so yeah. I think that's, that's really special. And I want to talk about Liz for a second because I played against Liz at a USA minicamp and uh -huh. I've watched her for a while. And I feel like she doesn't get talked about enough and she doesn't have that spotlight because like you talked about, she's getting double and triple team and still putting up these numbers. I think the other day it was just like, now she leaves the ACC and double doubles all time. Mm -hmm. yep. And it was barely on the news and yep. like, it's wild to think about. So this is the time I want you to give Liz her flowers, break down her game without giving away the scouting report, but yeah. just the presence that she brings to the team and the core that she is with you and Kayla for bringing Virginia Tech on that map. Yeah. I mean, she's just always been the hardest worker. Like she's so attentive to detail. She always wants to get better. Um, and like, I think just like from a, a outside of watching it this year, like I think the start of the year was really hard for her because I think last year, like, she, and as you said like social media you shouldn't listen to it but like it can very much like creep into everything but like last year you know she was getting talked about like draft boards all of that and she comes mm -hmm. back and it kind of goes hush yeah and like as you said like the the double doubles and the stats like she can put up like 29 and 16 and people are like oh that's liz yeah like, are you it's, serious it's, like, it's expected it's expected. But like that yeah that's how good she is is that she, it's just like so normal for her to, to put those up and i think as a team like it's 
you have to celebrate that because it's like we could like do it like say as like oh that's just like Liz being Liz but like no that's like incredible stuff like that mm-hmm. opens up everything for everyone else and mm-hmm. it's kind of back to what I was saying before with like Kayla like we all know like that we play such a vital role in each other's success mm-hmm. I would not be able to do my stuff without Liz being a dominant force in the paint mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. we said she gets double or triple teamed yeah like when she kicks it out it's on us to make those shots to make sure that people don't want to risk that yeah and I think yeah earlier this year like people weren't really doubling her as much like kind of playing one-on-one and then the last couple of games have definitely been hitting her but like on any given night you just don't know how people are going to try and mess it up because at this Mm -hmm. point like you can't be like all right let's double her or like all right let's let's put on an island like teams are trying new things out Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. and like they might send two they might send three they might stab they might i don't know It, it just gets crazy so it like for teams to like fully change their game plan and the way that they play for like one player it's just that's the biggest compliment you could ever have yeah and I think like because she's not getting that attention from the media like it's really on us to like make sure that it's known that what she's doing is incredible stuff yeah no I I I completely agree at the end of the day we're just just some girls that need some love (laughs) and attention (laughs) and when we don't get that (laughs) but we talked about Liz and Kayla maybe give me a sleeper pick on your own team that people don't talk about enough, but you feel like is a core piece that's going to help fuel you guys and hopefully another Final Four run into the ACC tournament. Yeah. First of all, all of them. I love all of them. But I think someone who's really stepped into their role and has like kind of changed the complexity of like our team is Mm -hmm. Olivia Samuel. Like Mm -hmm. Liv has like... She's a key. the pressure that she puts on the boards, like she might not always get the rebound, but like she just adds that that pressure and she's able to hit that, like some open shots down and, and she's just smart. She gets our plays. Mm-hmm. So like for sure her, but like the like the future of Virginia Tech women's basketball is in Clara Strack's hand. Mm-hmm. Like she's just, mm-hmm. she's a baby. She is a baby and she does some things. I'm like, okay, that's very freshman like, but her reaction and her movements is just like it's very promising and I'm so excited to see how she develops for these next couple of years yeah no I think you're completely right it's not going to end with you guys there's Mm -hmm. lots of people coming up behind and I think what makes your team special is like you talked about somebody like that who maybe didn't get as much play time last year coming in knowing your role executing it to the highest of your ability makes the entire team run effortlessly which I think is amazing Our next thing is going to be one's got to go. We've got, we've done some research on you, so these <laughs> okay. might get a little hard. Our first one is just a generic basketball one. So it's in your game day. I'm going to mm-hmm. give you three options. You got to kick one out. So it's going to be pregame meal, stretching, and warm up music. Which mm-hmm. one's got to go? Stretching. Uh, see, yeah, I think so too. Because I got to <laughs> eat and I got to have my tunes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now this one's your research from your TikTok, um, and this is Australian themed. So, please don't, please, you know, just tell me if I pronounce these wrong. But we have Bundaberg Lemon Lime and Bitters. Oh, yeah. Okay. A flat white or an up and go chalk chalk ice. Mm -hmm. Which one's got to go? go. Yeah. Probably the up and go. Oh, okay. Because like, so like flat white, great coffee. Bundaberg, yeah, yeah, yeah. like lemon lime and bitters, great soda. Like up and go is like if I was like late to a workout, a morning workout, like I would chuck one of them down and like be good to go. Like that's uh, like a replace. Like that's like like a. It's disgusting, but it says liquid breakfast on the. Food. Ooh, no but thanks. it was just easy to put down, okay. <laughs> so it can go. <laughs> you know, it's okay. Everybody has their things. Um, and then my last one's got to go for you. It's also Australian themed. We have chicken salt, mm-hmm. po- pods Mars, mm-hmm. and and peri peri salt. Oh, this one looks to be a toughie. <laughs> Which one's got to go? <laughs> this is the hardest question all day. It is. Okay, so <laughs> there's two there's two salts and one chocolate. So that's really hard first. Uh, Maybe pods. Purely pods because go. I love pods, but like I just, <laughs> this is very bad. I can eat as much chicken salt and not worry about anything but if i eat so many pods like i will be packing on the poundage understood understood and that's just not very athlete of me yeah 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 we're elite here so can't be doing that (laughs) and then now i want to talk about your own podcast a quick shout out to you and liz queens of the castle where'd the idea of the podcast start um first of all thank you 
great. Mm-hmm. I, I love being on this platform. This is women <laughs> uplifting women. Yes, we already <laughs> talked about it. We need it. But this idea, it was last year and it was before, honestly, like any of the run happened. Like it was a great time to start it because we went on such a run and we got such yeah. attention that it kind of just everything just benefited from it. But I mean, the start of last year, well, it was Liz's senior year and she didn't know if she was going to stay or not. Mm-hmm. And it was like, if, if we just had like a virtual diary to just like yeah. go back in 20 years and be like, hey, like this is where we we're at. Like it would be like so cool to look on and like obviously digi- digital footprint is a real thing, positive mm-hmm. and negative. Yes. But our memories are there. Like I, we can go back and watch it. And not only that, but like we just develop a relationship with the people in the community and people yeah. genuinely like come up to us and like as they should, they think they know us better or like they think they can come up to us and like start a conversation because we have that personality or they already have like a a idea of us because of like how natural it is on the podcast so it's like it's just more inviting um yeah for yeah people to come to us and and talk well i mean shoot i need to come on queens the queens of the castle i I, just Just let me let me get on and chat i mean we have each other numbers slide in the dms again i'm here But we're going to slide into our last section here, which is the vibe check. And it's going to be mm-hmm. rapid fire, rapid fire questions. So give me your quickest responses as possible. It's okay if, if it's not as you've been doing great so far. So it's going to be great. Okay. So what's the drill you never want to see on the practice plan? Fast break or shoot. Oh, that already sounds horrible. Is that like, <laughs> like full court stuff? It's like, going on? Yeah. So it's like. It's either five, four, three, two, one, or one, two, three, four, five. So it's like everyone has to get a layup. So it's like a oh, point no. guard. Yeah, but it's like sometimes it'll be like, all right, 26 seconds on the shot clock. So uh, I'm out here like Tom Brady, like baseball go! passes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. understood. Um, game-winning shot or game-winning steal? Ooh, a uh, shot. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking for you. I better be a step back or something wild yeah. too. Okay, a group TikTok or solo TikTok? Group. Group. Where's the toughest place to play on the road? And tell me why. Probably Louisville. The Young Center is pretty big. Yeah. Okay. Who's the biggest trash talker? It could be on your team or somebody else. Haley Van Luth. Ooh. She is a trash talker. She is. You're right. What is, and I, you be, you be talking out there. I be seeing you chirping. What's your best trash talk line? Oh, I just, I'm a mocker. Like if someone's oh. like, if someone's like switch or like, you know, like pick, like, cause obviously if there's no doubt about it, me and Liz are going to do a pick and roll. So if you're going to yeah, communicate yeah, yeah. something about that and we hit the shot and we'd be like, okay, you know what? <laughs> you try something else. It, yep. it, it ain't work clearly. Okay. Okay. This is a little controversial here. Who's the biggest flopper? I mean, it, it was Taylor soul too. That woman was Oh, crazy. she can sell it. Let me tell you, she can sell it. Okay. Who's the hardest player to guard? Caitlin Clark. I didn't do much mm. garden. I didn't do much garden. I did a lot of switching. So watching. Yeah, a lot of but switch. I was, switch, I was please. <laughs> okay, understood. What's your uh, favorite in-game celebration? Because you got a lot. We've seen them. Oh, okay. Just, yeah. Just the threes. There's, there's so many ways to do it. Yeah, there's a lot of variations. Keep you on your yeah. toes. Yeah. Okay, Um, your biggest basketball ick? Oh, it would probably just be like flopping. Or, no, let's talk about oh. it. Oh. When uh-huh. you know, you, you, she knows she hit the ball out of bounds. So why are we acting? Oh, yes. Because why are you lying? They're going to put on the replay. They're yeah. going to put on the replay. And now, yeah, that's a good embarrassing. One. That's embarrassing. I agree. That's a good one. Um, okay, do you have a celebrity lookalike and who is it? Well, I got asked this at the Final Four and I said Dua Lipa, which is so not true. But if I could look like anyone, it would be her because she is a woman. <laughs> she is a woman. I don't, I I don't think that. I have a lookalike though. I like the Dua Lipa one. I'm here for it. Okay. Um, Please, I want I want to reinforce. I do not think I look like okay, her. Okay. I wish like, I looked like her. But like we would want to be a Dua Manifest Lipa. Manifest it. Yeah. Okay. I like it. Mm-hmm. And what's your best impersonation of Coach Brooks? For me personally, he can just like give me like an the eyes. Oh, he's like oh okay. You have like a little and connection. Like, you know. You yeah. know. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Well, Georgia. Queen of the Castle, half of Queen of the Castle. Thank you so much for coming on the pod. It has been such a pleasure. No, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Honored to be reached out by you. Oh, jeez. Oh, stop. (laughs) Well, thank you, everybody, so much for listening. We'll be back next week with another episode of Sometimes I Hope.